Hi guys, we've had some questions about the drug calculator, so I wanted to give you a little walkthrough, talk to you about why it exists and how I use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, calculating infusions is a big part of my job. It's something that's really important to know how to do, but it's also quite time-consuming. Um, there's a lot of steps and possibilities for error and potentially patient harm. So if we're going off the idea that we always want more than one step between an action and harming the patient, then we're going to try and maximize our, our safety. So the drug calculator just adds in a couple of extra steps, because when you go through the actual calculation, it's something you're doing consciously, and then you're also verifying that with a colleague and printing out that sheet to have next to the patient to reference. So as for the calculator itself, you can see we've got a number of drugs on here. On the index page, you can click on any medication, um, and it will take you to that and you can click the index to take you back to it. So let's say for example we're just trying to do some fluid calculations for our patient. We know they weigh 7.6 kilos and we think maybe they're about 7% dehydrated. So if you were to leave the dehydration out, you just want to know what your maintenance is, um, then it will calculate that for you as well as some boluses um, for dogs and for cats. So on the left column you've got dogs, on the right column you've got cats. Um, this is based off of the Di Bartola body surface area calculation rather than a straight two mils per kilo. So smaller patients will get relatively larger amounts of fluid um, and uh, larger patients will get relatively lower amounts. Um, if we throw in dehydration it's still going to tell you your dehydration but then it's going to throw in your fluid deficit and then it's going to tell you how many mils an hour to run fluids at to correct that dehydration while still providing maintenance it just depends on how quickly or slowly you want to do it so anywhere from 6 to 48 hours and you can extrapolate out how you want but let's say you got fluids under wrap maybe you're looking for um, uh, noradrenaline or a norepinephrine infusion so we would just click on here alternatively you can just go down to the bottom and you can look for it along there and click it um, we use noradrenaline a lot for our septic patients there is a dilution recommendation on here so if you go to the drop down menu where it says desired concentration you can select from 10 or 100 and it will show you the appropriate dilution instructions uh, underneath so that will appear or disappear based on on what you're doing it just depends on the size of your patient how much fluid you want to give so let's say we've got a 12 kilo doggy who's septic um, this will give you the dilution instructions and um, how many mils an hour to run it at now if you were to go down to a, a bigger concentrate or a, a smaller dilution or a small a large dilution smaller concentration then you're going to get relatively higher volumes. So the concentration you pick really is going to be based around how uh, many mics per kilo per minute you're using and also the size of the patient because well if you've got a septic patient you're worried about fluid overload um, you're probably not going to be wanting to put 36 mils an hour into them on top of their their other fluids so maybe we would go with 100 instead anytime you want to make a change you do need to hit the calculate button again for it to show up so then we've got a much more respectable number there. Um, let's say we want to do something like a dexmedetomidine infusion. Um, again, it's going to be based on your patient weight. So if you've got a, let's say, 7.4 kilo patient, how many mils an hour are you giving? Well, if we want to give like a anti-anxiety amount and we wanted to start maybe a 0.1 mics per kilo per hour, 0 0.07 mils an hour is probably a bit hard to do accurately in your syringe driver so maybe we should pick um, one instead of ten and that will give us 0.74 mils um, a little more accurate but again if you're getting up into a 33 kilo patient you can probably get away with da, 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 da. 10 mics per mil and have some nice accuracy so you've got some flexibility here um, medications like fentanyl, we've got um, 25 and 50 as the concentration because most of the time you're going to be using either one of those. 
rates are quite high. Um, something like propofol, we don't dilute. Typically, um, it's not recommended to dilute, and you end up giving quite high volumes anyway. So that will all be there if you go back to the index. Um, for some of the supplements, like magnesium, it can be a little complex. So we've got um, patient weight cutoffs because we want to avoid using too much of a concentration or else we're going to cause a bit of vasculitis and irritation. So that's why we've got less than 40 kilos. Um, you've also got a dose range, 0.25 to 1 milli equivalents per kilo per day. So again, let's just pick a 14.7 kilo dog. Um, I think we usually start at the lower end of the dose of 0.25. So um, it's going to tell you how much magnesium sulfate to dilute into saline. And what it's going to do is give you a total volume of um, 60 mils sorry, 50 mils, and then you're going to be running that, sorry, I don't even know what I'm talking about, 48 mils, and then you're going to be running that at uh, 2 mils an hour. Um, for bigger patients, you need to dilute it into a bigger bag, the 100 mil bag, and it's going to be at a, an awkward about 4 to 4.2 mils an hour. But again, it's just to keep the um, veins happy, even if you're going through a, a central line. And we've got dopamine, dobutamine, um, ketamine, um, alfaxalone, midazolam, and then an isometrazone calculator because we all know we're giving uh, a metrazole to every patient who walks in the door these days. Vasopressin, um, sometimes hard to get a hold of, but it's our sort of sometimes second line agent behind noradrenaline if we've got an especially acidemic or cold patient. So you've got lots of flexibility. Um, we're happy to add any medications you might like, just let us know. Um, we'll also probably get around to doing a uh, whole bag one, but I suppose I'm not a big fan of having them in bags, um, and uh, the maths in the lecture can tell you how to do that. Alternatively, um, there are other people out there with calculators, but if there's a big enough demand, we'll be happy to do it. Anyway, hopefully this answers your question. And we'll just look at the emergency drugs. Um, and again, for 12, this is a nice one to print out. This is based off of all of the recover drugs. So we've got both adrenaline, atropine, vasopressin, amiodarone. You just got to watch out for that anaphylaxis. Um, it's not a common drug. Humans use it a lot. Our reversal agents, um, mannitol in various concentrations based on what you stock in-house. We stock the 10%, so we don't have to use a filter unless we see crystals. You don't have to warm it up. Um, midazolam or diazepam, and then of course our defibrillation. So um, both the um, internal and external, although I've noted it doesn't actually say internal there, which we'll uh, go ahead and correct for you, um, as well as the low dose and the high dose. So yeah, thanks for tuning in guys.